It seems like these days Disney is massive and most of the time they're turning out incredible films year after year, especially the animated films which usually go on to be massive successes and classic movies for all ages. But it hasn't always been like this for Disney. Disney at some points have gone through real rough stages that have affected the studio intensively to the point of nearly shutting down. This happened a few decades ago, but it happened more recently than that. In fact, Disney have gone through a full decade recently of turning out animated movies that were kind of box office failures and not up to their usual high standards. So today I'll be going through what happened to Disney in the early 2000s and why it is referred to as the second Disney Dark Age. Now before I jump into the early 2000s I should probably go back to when Disney first started and when they had their first Dark Age and how they came back from it. When Disney made their first animated film in 1937, it was a massive success and led the way for more animated movies that eventually went on to be classics. Classics like Snow White, Peter Pan and Cinderella, that's just to name a few. By the year 1967, Disney had made 19 animated movies. By this time, Walt Disney had passed away. The company was lost without him and started turning out movies that were not up to their standard or quality. This is when Disney had their first Dark Age, from 1970 to 1988. Movies like Robin Hood, The Fox and the Hound and The Black Cauldron are all a part of the Disney Dark Age. It wasn't until 1989 when The Little Mermaid came out that kick-started what is called the Disney Renaissance. Movies such as Aladdin, The Lion King and Beauty and the Beast are all a part of the Disney Renaissance, and these were movies that saved Disney. They had finally found their formula again and they were making good movies that with hand-drawn animation. The renaissance uh, continued through the 90s but it wasn't until the early 2000s when Disney started to lose their magic touch. This is where Disney started to make movies that were not as good. In fact, this era of Disney is most commonly referred to as the post-Disney renaissance. But it's also called other things like the second Disney Dark Age and the Disney Experimental Era. And I think that's a good way to phrase this decade of films, because most of these movies in the post-Renaissance don't feel like they're made by Disney. Because they've been trying the same way of telling stories for the last decade, they wanted to um, try new things of telling stories in a unique way. And to say it politely, this was not a good idea. Movies that are included in the post-Renaissance are... The Emperor's New Groove, Dinosaur, Fantasia, 2000, Atlantis, The Lost Empire, Lilo and Stitch, Treasure Planet, Home on the Range, Brother Bear, Chicken Little, Bolt, and Meet the Robinsons. And the movie that started this post-Renaissance was none other than Fantasia, 2000. This movie was enough to end the renaissance due to it not doing as well at the box office and while well, not being as a good film as the others before it. And this was a following effect throughout the decade because most of these films didn't do that well at the box office critically or with a public audience. And even though a lot of these movies aren't that good, there are a couple that are alright like Lilo and Stitch and The Emperor's New Groove, but as I said, they were making very little profit back from these films. They had lost their spark and way of storytelling and what made Disney, well, Disney. And this was a way of experimenting with new tactics and it wasn't actually going that well. And now they weren't even the leading animation studio. Pixar, who had just made their first movie in 1995 and which was also the first computer animated film, may I add, were doing much better than Disney. Pixar were releasing films like Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles. Pixar had taken the lead. Even DreamWorks and Blue Sky Animation were doing so much better than Disney. DreamWorks had just released Shrek, which was basically mocking Disney movies and went on to be a massive success, and Blue Sky were in the middle of their Ice Age series. It was obvious that Disney were in trouble and were finding it hard to get back um, to the world of animation where they were and around this time they were also making straight to dvd movies of their classic films and this did not help the situation they were even releasing some of these movies theatrically like into the cinemas like peter pan 2 and the jungle book 2 
Disney were not doing too well, and I think a factor of this was by the way their movies were animated. As I said before, Pixar, DreamWorks, and Blue Sky Animation were doing much better than Disney, and a factor of that was the way those studios were animating their movies. Both studios were now using computer graphics to animate their films, and Disney was still using the traditional way of animating, which is of course hand-drawn animation. Sure, it worked in the past, but now there were other studios who were animating in this new way, and 2D animation was on a decline, and Disney had missed the mark on this, and were still using their old ways. So, Disney put the hand-drawn animation aside, and released their first computer animated movie, Chicken Little. <sighs> I mean, the movie did just fine at the box office. Not many people liked it. It got mixed reviews. And I know that they were trialling things um, for the first time, but the animation doesn't really hold up. By 2006, Disney had been in this dark age, or experimental era, for over half a decade. And things were still not going well. But around this time, they had just finished a deal with Pixar to produce seven films, and they made a deal to purchase Pixar for $7.4 billion. And also in 2006, they hired John Lasseter, the head of Pixar, to oversee all of these the decisions that were made at Disney, and to chain, make all of these changes in the company. So in 2007, they released Meet the Robinsons, which again did fine, and it was alright, um, but it was nothing outstanding for them. And then in 2008, they released Bolt, which did make more the box office and did alright with audiences. And that was enough to end the Disney post-Renaissance. And their next film, The Princess and the Frog, is the film that most people think saved Disney and was the film that brought them back. But I would have to disagree. The film did only fine at the box office, and for some reason, they went back to using their traditional way of filmmaking, which is hand-drawn animation. So I don't think this is a new era for Disney. Even though it did well, it's not the film that saved the studio, and kick-started the new era of Disney, which is the Disney revival, or another name for it is the second Disney renaissance. So, what is the movie that did start the Disney revival? Well, this movie made more of the box office than some of the movies in the first renaissance and also told a classic fairy tale in a new way. It is none other than Tangled. Tangled is the movie that saved Disney and started this new era in the company. They thankfully went back to computer animation for this film and also reintroduces princesses and this is something that they've definitely started to do and is something that also really worked in the Disney Renaissance. This film feels like a Disney movie, and this movie was one that started a lineup of successful animation movies by Disney. You got movies like Frozen, Moana, Wreck It Ralph, Zootopia, and Big Hero 6. And even though Disney are still experimenting with their films, they do it in a much better way, and hopefully the Disney revival will continue for many years to come. Thank you so much for watching this video. Comment down below what you think of um, the Disney revival and what your favourite movie is um, out of that era. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and make sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next Friday.